To find the solution set for this linear equality, what we first do is isolate the variable in exactly the same way we do with linear equations. What I'm going to do is simplify the right-hand side's equation by distributing this 4 through the parentheses. And then I'm going to consolidate the variable. Um, what I'm going to choose to do here is I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides of this inequality. By subtracting 4x from both sides, it's going to cancel the 4x on this side. So I'm just going to be left with a negative 12 on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, 2x minus 4x gives me minus 2x, then plus 5 still there. Now this is a two-step inequality. I'm first going to subtract 5 from both sides. And what I'm left with is negative 2x is greater than negative 17. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 to get x by itself. And what I get is x and then I get 17 halves on the other side. Importantly, I wanted to highlight this process or this step right here. On this step right here, we've divided with a negative. When you divide with a negative, your inequality sign must flip to keep this inequality true. And so this won't be a greater than sign. It's now going to be x is less than 17 halves. That part right there, that little trick, is the only thing that's different between inequalities and equations. Now I want to describe this solution set, which is that all the numbers less than 17 halves, not including 17 halves. And I want to describe it with uh, an interval notation. How I do this is I always first in order to describe this in interval notation, I always first write the number line version of this. So all the numbers less than 17 halves. So here's a number line. And all the numbers less than 17 halves, so not including 17 halves, and the number is less than. The interval notation for this then is the upper bound is 17 halves. That's the largest number, but it's not included in the set. And we have no lower bound, so whenever we, whenever we don't have a lower bound, we use negative infinity. And so this right here is the final answer in interval notation for our solution set. Before moving on, I want to revisit this problem real fast and say I had a decision I could have made at the very beginning up here. Instead of subtracting 4x from both sides, what I could have done is subtract 2x from both sides. And importantly, it won't matter. Um, if we write so 2x plus 5 is greater than 4x minus 12. So again, this is after I've distributed that first set. Um, I could subtract 2x from each side. So I'm going to subtract 2x. Again, this still consolidates the variable. I get left 5 is greater than 2x minus 12. Um, and then I'm going to add 12 to both sides, because now I have a two-step inequality here. And then divide by 2. You know, really important. Um, at this point, the difference between these two cases and why I decided it was worth it to spend time talking about this is the similarities and differences between what happened at this step right here. In this first version I did, I was dividing by a negative, which required me to flip this inequality sign. 
when I did it this way on the right hand side and subtracted 2x in the beginning, I didn't have to flip my sign because I'm not dividing by a negative. I'm dividing here by a positive value. So I did not have to flip my inequality sign. Though it's important to note, when it's written like this, it says 17 halves is greater than x. What we will often do is want the x written first. Um, and importantly is when I, if I want to reorder this and write the x on the left hand side, I have to flip everything over and the inequality sign does flip when I do this. So this written with the x on the left would look like this, x is less than 17 halves. Importantly is the small part of the inequality sign is still pointing to the x and the greater than part is still pointing to the 17 halves. Um, and the solution set for this is still the same as it was previously because it's the same inequality.